Today, thousands of people filled the West Papua city of Jayapura to condemn recent killings and arrests by Indonesian police and to call for a referendum on independence from Indonesia. In October, the Papuan People's Congress was closed down by the violent intervention of Indonesian police and military. At least six people were killed. More than 300 were taken into custody. There are at least 40 political activists being held in Papua, including the popular pro-independence leader Philip Karma, who is serving 15 years in jail for rebellion. Indonesian officials refused to allow foreign media or aid workers into the province to conduct independent inquiries. But now, in this rare interview with Philip Karma, he claims he has suffered physical and mental abuse while in jail. FSRN's Rebecca Henschke reports. Philip Karma leads hundreds of Papuan students in cries of independence during a demonstration in the provincial capital in December 2004. They then raised the banned Morning Star flag the symbol of an independent Papua, while military police watch on. For this act of defiance, Philip Kama was jailed for 15 years for rebellion. I know that Indonesia is a democracy. My understanding was that Indonesia is a democracy, and according to the law, in order to hold a demonstration, you don't need to have a license, but you need to inform the police of your activities three days before the event. I did that, but they terrorized us in a nation that is meant to be a democracy, a nation where freedom of speech is meant to be protected. What I want to know is, is this a nation controlled by terrorists? Foreign journalists are restricted from reporting in the province and the International Red Cross was ordered out of Papua last year after it visited political prisoners. In this rare interview conducted without the permission of the authorities, Kama claims prison guards abuse him on a weekly basis. I have been punched, kicked, pulled, but what hurts more is the mental torture we're subjected to. An officer once told me, when you enter here, you lose all your rights, including human rights. Your rights are only to breathe, eat, and follow our orders. He even went so far as to say that your life is in my hands. Another Papuan activist, former political prisoner, Fernanda Pakage, lost sight in one eye due to a beating by a guard. The head of the Papuan branch of the Ministry for Law and Human Rights, Nasruddin Bunas, confirms the beating took place. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, it was very clear that one of the prisoners, Ferdinand Pakage, was beaten by a guard. That's the truth. We are processing the case, and the guard who did it is being processed by the police. He says they're trying to change the culture of abuse in prisons. Yes, in our jails, we still do have a problem with Papuan guards who like to get drunk and come to work, then beat up the prisoners. That is still happening. That's a problem, and we are working on that. Nasruddin Buna says his local office of the Ministry of Justice and Human Rights has lodged a petition to the president to have 32 political prisoners in Papua released. Philip Kama says he's already been offered a pardon from the Indonesian government as long as he abandons his independent struggle, something he would never accept. Papua is rich in natural resources and is the home of the world's largest gold mine owned by U.S. company Freeport yet Papua remains one of the least developed parts of Indonesia. Philip Kama refused to give details on the strength or size of the Papuan separatist movement. But the Brussels-based International Crisis Group says it's no match for the Indonesian security forces. Kama has dire predictions for his people. If there are no changes, I make the harsh estimation that by 2020, ethnic Papuans will be extinct. The way of thinking of the Indonesian government is to slowly and certainly destroy the Papuan people through poison, alcohol, killings, stealing of our ancestral lands, suppressing our economic rights, 
in the way that our brother and sister aboriginals of Australia or the Indians of America were crushed. Kama, citing a former government official who said Papuans should go live on the moon or in the sea, believes the government is deliberately trying to destroy Indigenous people to exploit the natural resources of their land. Despite the challenges, he's determined. So our people must rise up. We must shout loudly for our rights. We must fight for independence or be destroyed. For much of the past decade since the assassination of the pro-independence leader Teus Elway, Indonesia has sought to prevent any public discussion of independence. Indonesian President Susilo Bangbang Yudhoyono has admitted that the old ways of using military means to solve issues in Papua have failed, yet his words seem to be having little impact on the ground. Rebecca Henschke, Free Speech Radio News, Jakarta.